Okay, let's um, let's start. Let's pray. Let's look to God. Father, we, we just want to thank you, Lord, that you are with us all the time. In every season, you are God. And so, Lord, we, we just want to thank you for your presence. Lord, you said that you will never leave, that you will never forsake. So, Lord, we are mindful of that. We acknowledge that. Uh, and we've experienced that truth, oh God, time and time again. So we just want to thank you. And Father God, right now, um, Lord, we just pray for your comfort upon the family, uh, grieving family, God. We uh, we just pray that you would, um, Lord, your presence, Lord, is something that will um, be so tangible to them during this time. All the questions that might be going through their minds, Lord, I pray that, um, Father God, that you will take them through that. You will journey with them, God. Master, we, we commit the family, <clears throat> we commit um, everything, Lord, into your mighty hands. And Lord, we, we commit to, um, this day into your mighty hands, God, and what we are going to look, um, study um, today, God, even as we look into your word. Father, we pray that um, that you will lead us, Lord, into all truth, as you always do, because you are the way, the truth, and the life. And so, God, we we just want to thank you. Uh, even as you do this, Lord, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you for, uh, Lord, it's so real, so tangible, so clear. Lord, we thank you for your voice, that the fact that you speak. And Lord, the, um, Lord, we thank you that you enable us to be able to hear God. And uh, yes, as the scriptures say, he who has the ear, hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And so this morning, Lord, we come with, um, Lord, um, to sharpen our hearing, Lord, um, to hear what you are saying, what the Spirit of God is saying, and uh, that we might be <clears throat> diligent hearers and doers of your word, Lord doers of the work that you've called us to do, God. We thank you. And at this time, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, <clears throat> yeah, as we look at um, today's class, we, um, we stopped last class at uh, Word of Wisdom. Let me just project the notes. Um, Okay, so we looked at um, the word of wisdom, which is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we also looked at, you know, how word of wisdom operates. We looked at some of the examples in the Old and the New, uh, New Testament, right? So we see that it's uh, such a you know, precious gift and the Lord has, um, uh, you know, given this uh, to the body, to the believer, <clears throat> so that uh, obviously, you know, to, to um, help the believer, to edify the body of Christ, right? So, so we see that, and we also looked at how, um, you know, how the word is uh, received. I think we we just started to look at that, right? Um, like through the like how we we've been looking at uh, in the earlier all the other gifts that, uh, that this is also something that is received in the spirit. Right, received in the spirit man um, to be to perceive by this our spiritual senses as the Holy Spirit makes it known to us. So we, um, uh, yeah, you know, there's um, so he he speaks to us in, 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 in through a prompting, through a quickening of Scripture, and a sense of knowing that is on the inside. Uh, something that is visual words of uh, uh, sentences of phrases and and all these wonderful ways you know it can also be um, you know something that we did not plan right uh, um, like uh, unpremeditated speaking so what does that mean that means that you do not plan to speak you do not plan to um, you know share that but you find yourself sharing it and you find yourself praying it right and uh, well just to back up a little, what is Word of Wisdom? Word of Wisdom is um, a small piece of God's wisdom, right? Uh, this infinite God, with this infinite wisdom, chooses to make uh, a small portion of that wisdom, a small piece of that infinite wisdom, um, chooses to impart that to us. Right? So we receive that in our hearts, and it serves uh, uh, multiple purposes, 
right? So we, we see that it could be uh, in solving issues, solving, uh, it could be, the, uh, you know, creative things, creative ideas, and so on. Uh, Word of Wisdom also, you know, we receive it through dreams and visions. So we could receive it as a dream. We, we could receive it, see it as a, as a vision. And, um, you know, uh, dream is something that happens to us, occurs to us when we are asleep. Right, we are not aware. Uh, I mean, we are not in control uh, of our body. We we sleep and then we we have the dream. Uh, vision uh, could happen when we are asleep, or it could be when we are awake as well. Right, it's something. Uh, everything. It's something visual. And uh, right, we see we see in scripture that the angelic messengers or angels also come to the aid of believers, and they come and. Um, uh, they come with solutions, like God sends angels um, to instruct believers, to give his wisdom to believers, to, to tell them what they need to do, right? What they need to do, and uh, we see that also, okay? So as believers, <clears throat> like, we are open to the word of wisdom, right? We are open to the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in this manner, uh, we know the objective is to benefit fellow believers, edify the body of Christ, and to glorify Jesus, right? So that's the purpose, that's the objective. So um, so how do I share this? Now, let's say I receive this word of wisdom. How do I share it? Um, you know, with regard to the prophetic, we saw, okay, you pray, you perceive, which means you are aware of what God is putting in your spirit and you prophesy. Okay, the same way we pray, we, we receive it, we perceive it, and we share it. Okay, and while we share it, um, why because word of wisdom is normally an instruction, right? Um, yeah, so uh, there's a question can we have a vision while we sleep? Yeah, um, I, yeah, um, we have, um, I forget the reference, but I can probably share it to you a little later. Maybe during the break, I'll check it out. So in a dream, he has a vision, you know, like one of the prophets. I don't know if it's Ezekiel or... Um, uh, so in, in a dream, uh, he has a vision. So yes, vision can happen when we are asleep as well. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, so because the word of wisdom, it can be, a, you know, it's a solution. It's something like a, a piece of a puzzle. It's, um, you know, it's a creative idea. Uh, so somebody say, shares, let's say, shares a problem, and you pray, and God gives this, um, gives the word how to you know solve this thing. So the thing is, we uh, are the tendency would be to say, hey, this is what God has said. You better go and do it, right? You better carry it out. Um, but the thing is, it involves the will of that person, right? And so when we begin to um, share it, um, we should not pressurize right we should not put pressure on them to okay come on this is what god has spoken so go ahead do it you know or agree with it no let god speak to them let god uh you know convince them as well let them get a, a witness in their spirit also and right? let god confirm to them as well so so uh so this is how you know we we share we share uh, we do not force, compel, or demand, demand action. Right? We share with humility and with submission. And uh, we also understand that, um, uh, or, and also probably share with that person, see, it requires um, you to follow through. Okay, this is what God says, that this is an idea, or this is something that God uh, says that it will, it, will, it will bring about a solution, or God will bring this about. But it requires me to follow through. You know, it could be to work hard. It could be to you know, gather more information. Uh, but God's favor is there. God's favor is there to to solve that. Right. So uh, it doesn't mean that I can be either complacent or I can be reckless and and do my own thing and ex expecting to you know work out. Right. So um, so we can as believers we can clarify that. And say hey, this requires you to work through. This requires, like, um, like Paul tells Timothy. Of course, in the, it's in the context of prophecy. But he says, you know, with these prophetic utterances um, that you have received, you fight the good fight. He says, you fight the good fight with these prophecies, right? So, well, these prophecies has come saying that God will do this for you. God will, you know, you will become this. 
Um, but there's something, there was a responsibility uh, on Timothy's part that he needed to believe it, he needed to take a hold of it, and uh, whatever else was coming against it, he had to fight, fight with, you know, with, with the word of God. Um, so it could have been intimidation, discouragement, it could have been fear, anxiety, whatever. Uh, but he had it, he had to kind of face it, confront it, and overcome it with the word of God, right? Which is the sword of the spirit. So similarly, um, in here also, you know, you have a responsibility, right? Okay. So um, sometimes what happens is that, um, uh, you know, we receive the word of wisdom. Maybe it's for, a, you know, it's a great idea for uh, maybe a, for a ministry idea, for an outreach idea, or for the church, something for the church. And, and, um, and it involves people, it involves a team to carry it out. So, uh, and sometimes we cannot just enforce it, right? We need to get the agreement of people. And of course we can share it and say, okay, this is the thing, what do you think, right? Um, so that'll, that'll, that can be part of the testing as well, right? When we share it and then, uh, yeah, that's something that God has been putting in others' hearts as well. So they confirm and say, yes, you know, let's do this, right? Okay. Um, some other things, you know, because we can release the word of wisdom, that doesn't mean we uh, we stop educating ourselves, or we stop learning, or we stop being trained and equipped. Right? Um, so yes, God does give us wisdom, but um, God has, God has also given us. Uh, I mean, God does give us the word of wisdom, which is uh, you know uh, a part of His infinite wisdom, but. Um, we can also learn. Uh, we don't have to stop ourselves from learning and uh, informing and uh, being trained and equipped uh, ourselves, right? Okay. So that's about word of wisdom. Let's look at word of knowledge, okay? And then maybe after this, we'll uh, probably take a few questions. Okay, what is word of knowledge? So word of wisdom uh, we saw as part of uh, God's wisdom, um, and uh, which God puts in our heart. Word of knowledge uh, is again a supernatural uh, impartation. So it's knowledge, it's information. It could be it could be about the present, it could be about the past, and it's information about about something. Okay, um, and that word of knowledge normally when when it's shared, it um, it accomplishes a few things. Right. So when when it's information about let's say a person. Um, that no one else knows, right? It could be something that's happening in the present. It could be something that's happening in the past. So when when God reveals that information and uh, and we share that information, so uh, with the person, so that person, the recipient of that information about the recipient of the word of knowledge, um, is stunned and draws near to God, right? understands that God. There's someone called God. You know, if the person who does not believe in God says, you know, hey, this, there is someone, and he knows all about my life, and uh, so it draws near to draws near to God, right? And also understands if it's a if it's a believer, uh, uh, and also otherwise, they understand that God knows them personally, loves them deeply, okay, and cares for them, and is uh, interested in them, right? So. Um, so they draw near to God. Okay. Word of knowledge also informs us about what God is doing. Okay, um, like what God is um, doing at that moment. Maybe He gives a word of knowledge about the condition of someone's uh, someone's life and uh, some symptoms that they are experiencing. And uh, and and the fact is that God wants to heal. God wants to change that, right? change that circumstance, um, because. Uh, you know, that is who God is. So he reveals that. And also maybe things about the past uh, to heal that, to change that so that it doesn't affect our present and our future, right? So so a word, uh, word of knowledge, very, very, um, it can be a blessing in people's lives. Right? It can be edifying for the body of Christ, um, for the church where they come to know, they come to understand that, yes, um, God knows us where we have been, and God uh, God is with us where we are, and so it's it's very encouraging. Okay, we have a, a question. Can we say that the Book of Genesis, okay, written by word of knowledge, revealed?
through Moses. Okay, like we, we can say it was inspired. Uh, like uh, the Bible talks about uh, how all Scripture is uh, by inspiration from God. So definitely, um, it's inspired writing. Um, but word of knowledge is actually a small piece of information, you know. Um, so I, I'm I'm not really sure if we can, you know, if that would classify. You know, it's a it's a small piece. It could be a word. Um, so um, so maybe uh, yeah. We, suppose we can say you know a word um, in God's eyes. You know, when you when you compare. Uh, God's information or the knowledge that he has to what it is it, it could be a piece of it right so we could we could argue that way also but uh, word of knowledge is, is a small part of it it's like you know it's it's a word so uh, I, I don't know if it will strictly qualify the book of Genesis or any other you know scripture written by Revelation um, so yeah yeah that's what uh, I think Elisha okay Okay, so let's look at a few examples, like right? uh, probably one from the old, one from the new. Um, like a classic one is um, Saul loses his donkeys and he go is going in search, and um, he goes to Samuel to get help, right? and Samuel informs uh, Saul. He says uh, in, during the course of uh, we see in you know, one Samuel nine twenty. As for your donkeys. That they were that were lost three days ago. Do not be anxious, for they have been found now. Um, the donkeys were lost in a in a different place. Now Saul, so Samuel comes to know about it, and we see that uh, it is information that has been revealed, you know, to uh, Samuel right? uh, about um, to Samuel about Saul's donkeys, right, which were lost. So it's information that's uh, revealed to him by God uh, through the Spirit of God about Samuel. And what he lost. Right? Um, we see a similar situation in uh, Elisha and Gehazi. Um, Gehazi is Elisha's servant, lies to Naaman, and then, you know, and Elisha comes to know about, even though he's not physically present there, right there. Right? Um, so he says, Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet, meet with you, and so on? So, um, re revelation. Uh, uh, about that particular situation uh, to the man of God that that has happened. Um, uh, another one in the New Testament is um, John chapter four, where the Lord Jesus is having this conversation with the with the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, and um, he's talking to her, having this conversation, and then during the course of the conversation, he says. You know, go and call your husband, and then the, the woman says, "I I have no husband," and and the, right then and there, the Lord Jesus reveals her past. Okay, we know that the Lord Jesus during his earthly ministry was uh, was, was uh, anointed by the Holy Spirit, and he went about doing good. Right, that's what uh, the Book of Acts talks about. That he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. He went about doing good, and as part of the ministry. So. Uh, as part of his earthly ministry. So we see you know, the Lord Jesus revealing some information right there. So he says, okay, this, these were the number of times you were married because uh, you know, you've had five husbands and uh, now the one with whom you were living with is not your husband, right? So, and this woman is, is stunned. She says, I perceive that you're a prophet. Um, but also the way it has been shared the way it has been um, you know put across to her she goes back to the city and then calls everyone and then testifies about Jesus she says see a man who told me all things I ever did could this be the Messiah could this be the Christ right um, okay question Ananias and Sapphira yes that is also a word of knowledge revealed to uh, Peter uh, that's right Olivia. okay Okay, so so we see uh, many such examples. You can go through the notes, look at the examples. Um, um, many in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament now. So what happens is, um, you know, when we share a word of knowledge, it lets people uh, know that they God knows them, right? They right there in their struggles and their challenges, and that they are loved by God. 
God cares for them and God wants to change their life, right? Um, it helps solve problems. Like many times uh, we don't know, you know, uh, how to solve something, you know, where something is, um, maybe some, you've lost something and you don't know where it is. And, you know, God reveals that it's right here. And uh, um, I remember, you know, hearing a, a testimony of uh, one of our church believers many years back where um, along with the trash, uh, he, he also dropped an envelope of cash. You know, he was, um, he had this trash and I, I think he was holding this also. Uh, oh, sorry, not cash. It was a bunch of keys. So he, along with that, he, uh, you know, put that and he didn't realize it, right? He and was searching all over the place, uh, all over the house and uh, didn't find it. And then, uh, then asked the Lord, Lord, you, you, you showed me. Lord, I, I really want to know. And and he had a, I think he had a dream or uh, had some kind of a vision where um, he saw exactly, you know, the the trash can where he had thrown it and he saw that and then he went and, you know, recovered that. So uh, a word of knowledge, uh, again, you know, can help in solving things, help in restoring, retrieving things that are lost, some practical applications of that, right? Um yeah, like bringing conviction and repentance, right? uh, addressing area of sin and compromise, right? like Nathan did that with uh, with King David. Um, you know, bringing conviction and repentance um, when that is sh- uh, you know shared in a loving manner, right? Um, and also something that is affecting our present. Okay, now we don't know the root cause of that. And uh, this is particularly helpful when it's, uh, you know, in a, in a like a counseling maybe situation, right? Uh, and uh, maybe so this person's temperament, behavior, everything, you know, seems to be affecting the present and it's, um, it's not really helping either this person's marriage or the family. And, and, uh, and then God reveals the root cause of that. Right? Maybe this person is unwilling to share that, but then God reveals that. And then, you know, you question, you ask, you know, did something like this happen? And the person says, yes. So um, something that is that is affecting their present behavior and could be very, very, uh, you know, uh, detrimental to their future. But God reveals and, uh, and then, you know, able to change the whole thing. The whole course of life changes because of that, right? Um, Okay, so these are few, uh, uh, some of the uses or the benefits or the way in which the word of knowledge can be a blessing to people. Okay, so how is it received? Again, we go back to, you know, you see, uh, hearing God, uh, the, the, we looked at the, you know, the basic of uh, receiving in our spirit, being sharp in our spirit, being sensitive to what God is putting in our spirits. Now we come back to that over and over again, right? because God is spirit and he speak to, speaks to us um, in our, uh, our spirit man. Right? And uh, well, God speaks in many other ways. He speaks, speaks to, you know, through, uh, through circumstances, through, through people. Uh, but we know primarily that we go back to the word and the spirit. And we go back to the word, we go back to uh, the spirit of God, right? Uh, when he leads us uh, by his spirit and we go back to the word because he leads us by the word. Um, so uh, whatever we we are perceiving, we we again check, right? We, we check. Um, and in, in the case of word of knowledge, um, we, we really need to be, sensitive to the word of uh, to the spirit of god because now here's information okay here's information co- coming now now how do i check it with the word of god right so this information could be uh, something very very personal about a person and uh, well the only way to check it is to ask that person hey did something like this happen and and the reason that God is revealing that that is um, so that He can draw the person to Himself. He wants to change something about that person, and He will do something in that person's life, right? So, or maybe in our own lives, God is revealing certain things to us, right? So that's the that's the primary objective. So um, we we receive it in these ways, in words, 
maybe phrases, sentences, information. Uh, maybe it's something seen, something that is, uh, you know, maybe it's even a quickening of scripture, right? Or it could even be a, a scenario in scripture, right? A certain scenario in scripture, right? Um, maybe it's, um, let's say, um, the woman caught in adultery. You know, suddenly that that whole thing, you're praying and, and that picture comes to your mind. And maybe it's one aspect of it. Like the Lord saying, you know, you know, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Right. So you're praying for someone and and this is what this is the picture that comes to your mind. This is the whole scene that comes to your mind. So what is the Spirit of God revealing? Right? He's obviously revealing that uh, he's a God of compassion, who's compassionate, but he's a God who's holy and righteous. And this is the message that he has, you know, he's for the person go and say no more or um, so you can you can share that saying you know uh, maybe you had a past and uh, maybe you're feeling condemned by that but the Lord wants to you know so you know if it's uh, uh, if it's uh, let's say you know, you're having a conversation in private you could even ask that person right you know, did something like this happen and maybe the person will open up and share and then there's place for healing right and restoration okay so it could be impression it could be pictures it could be images it could be something that's a scenario from scripture it could even be physical sensations that we experience you know sometimes when it comes to praying for healing like uh, like certain sensation now you know, there's no scripture verse for it but we're just going with you know uh, what people have shared uh, when they are uh, when they've been ministering to people, right? Uh, maybe some kind of uh, sensation in their hand, and uh, and then they just went ahead and and prayed, and for someone maybe having problem with their hand, you know, maybe some kind of a problem with the wrist or something like that. They were experiencing momentarily, right? And uh, and they went ahead and asked or prayed, and there were people. Oh, there was one person in the congregation who responded to that. So um, God could use that. So the, the thing is this, you know, we, like the Holy Spirit who created a spirit, soul, and body has every right and uh, he has the ability to touch us in our spirit, in our emotions, and in our body. Right? He has the ability to do that. And when we are open and when we ask the Lord and we invite the Lord and say, God, you you move in through me. I'm a vessel. Right? I want to be a vessel. I want to be uh, a vessel of honor, a vessel which blesses others. Move in and through me. Now the Lord will do that. Right? The Lord will touch you in your spirit, in your soul, or in your emotions. You experience certain things and because of which you can you know, you can, um, you can be guided by God. Um, so, uh, and also, you know, when it comes to physical sensations, right? It could be an inspired utterance, just like we saw in the word of, uh, um, like you, you find yourself talking about certain conditions. You didn't think about it. You didn't plan about it, right? And uh, the information just bubbles up in your spirit, even as you pray, even as you're sensitive, right? Uh, maybe it's a dream, it's a vision, uh, angelic ministers, etc., angelic ministry, etc. Uh, and also, you know, this, this is interesting, like inspired writing, right? Maybe you're um, writing, texting, maybe it's a blog, but then you are inspired to write something that you did not plan. There's a, you know, God gives that, drops that in your spirit, and you, you, know, and you share that, right? Um, okay. Here are some other things, you know, it can be a circumstance, it can be, you know, a signpost, billboard, something, but uh, but the thing is that we need to be a little careful when it, you know, we need to be sensitive, yes, when it comes to these things. Otherwise, uh, we'll be looking at signs everywhere. You know, it's like how you go, you know, let's say you're considering buying a, buying a car, let's say it's a particular brand of car and uh, you wanted to buy a Ford, uh, maybe a Ford uh, SUV, whatever. And you know, it so happens that when you when you're going on the road, you your 
my your eyes actually look at all the ford cars you know like that particular thing you suddenly begin to notice all those ford cars so so you need to be careful you know when it comes to these kind of things right maybe it's a sign you know you're saying god you know i see that billboard i says you know travel take a vacation it's a sign i need to take a vacation you must be careful about that right but god can use that as well right okay okay so how do we share the word of knowledge again be gentle and loving in what you share because it's information right uh that about that person maybe it's not so good information right maybe it needs to be be sensitive it needs to be maybe shared in private um never in a condemning way never in a way to uh, you know make that feel person feel ashamed or never to break that person right because it's always to bring edification it could be to bring correction it could be it could be to uh you know point out to that person um uh, maybe some limitations about their lives maybe sin in their lives but but the thing is it's redemptive in nature so how do we share that in a redemptive manner it could be a strong word but how do you share that right um so be loving and gentle in what you share and be clear and specific you know when we are specific when we are clear and this is something that we need to grow in ourselves right when we are specific in what we are sharing then the person who receives it uh, it builds faith okay um like we see in 1 Corinthians 14 right? Paul talks about uh, you know how will it help a person unless i speak words um which are clear right? he talks about instruments and uh, and then of course the context is in the church uh, praying with understanding or giving a message with understanding uh, in a known language rather than in tongues right um so the thing is this when we are specific um in in what we are sharing then uh, then obviously the people the person who's receiving it is edified is blessed okay and we can of course validate we can ask wherever it whenever it's possible we can ask we can share we can you know i if this is what i'm sensing or this is what i believe god is um, you know showing us you know is there anybody like that right uh, somebody with this kind of a condition or maybe somebody going through this um so that what what is the intention of asking you know so that we can pray uh, in faith and it, this also builds up faith in the person um by saying oh a god knows about what i'm going through right so it also involves taking risks uh because let's say you're ministering to a congregation or you're ministering even you know um your one on one you're just having conversations with people and then it involves taking some risks and uh it it always also involves which means you 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 know you you might have you might risk being wrong okay you might risk being wrong um but i just want to share that uh, you know that would be a small percentage i'm not saying that you know we'll never be wrong yes because uh, we know that god is perfect the gift is perfect but as human vessels we are not we are work in progress right we are growing um but at the same time uh the margin uh, most times you know when you see that the the margin of error is is very very less okay that uh, we, we realize that hey god has spoken and uh, and this is what it is and uh, even if we make mistakes you know it's okay right uh, because you are you you know that's the thing right that's a whole uh, when we see in the new testament it's like whether whether it's prophecy and anything connected to with word of wisdom word of knowledge so it is it needs to be tested so you are submitting to the hearer and saying hey check and you yourself you are checking first Right. and then submitting to the hearer and saying you know you check you test and uh, so so it's both ways right so even when we make mistakes um either in hearing either in interpreting something it's okay right we didn't we didn't stop walking just because we fell fell down we didn't stop cycling because we fell off our the bicycle a couple of times you know just because there was some accident on the road you didn't stop riding or driving right so uh keep going keep pressing in okay 
Um, just want to share a couple of things, uh, you know, about uh, about this word of knowledge, um, you know, personal examples and taking risks. Um, you know, uh, right? Like personally, I'm I'm not one who really is like uh, who talk to strangers uh, temperamentally. You know, that's uh, but then kind of God is working on that and God changed that, right? But when it comes to, uh, you know, when I came to hear about, uh, learn about these gifts, I, I said, okay, God, I want to, you know, I want to try it out. I want to, I want to do that, be a blessing in people. So this happened uh, a few times, right? And and it's amazing how God, God speaks and, um, and you test it out and you realize that, yeah, you know, God knows and God, God speaks. And, uh, and, uh, and the thing is that, it's it's right most of the time, right? And just a couple of things that I wanted to share was one was about um, this. Um, you know, I was coming back from a mission trip, and uh, and uh, yeah, it was a, it was a long distance thing so, uh, from Varanasi to back to Bangalore, and so um, taking a flight back, and um, so it it stopped somewhere in um, I think Hyderabad, and then there were some passengers who got in. So I was asking the Lord, Lord, you know. Uh, so I was just sleeping all the way till Hyderabad. I, I, and I saw some people board come in, and then I was asking the Lord, Lord, you know, you you speak, God. You know, I want to, uh, you know, I want to share something with people, and uh, you speak. I want to be, you know, sensitive to what you're saying. So two people came and sat next to me, husband and wife. And uh, so I'm just asking the Lord, Lord, what is it? What is it? And uh, uh, well, first thing I saw was something like a like a racket. Okay, um, so it looked like a tennis racket. So I thought it was tennis racket. So, I, but it was a, definitely a racket. Uh, and then I I just kept it in my heart. I said, okay, God, ra- racket. Um, okay, what do I do with that? Um, then then some more God. Um, I said, okay, something, anything more, Lord. You know. Then I saw a mic with fire around it you know it was like uh it was like an old time mic uh microphone with had fire all around it and uh, and yeah so those were two pictures so i i asked a lot specifically and here with these as soon as these people started walking in and then so i just wanted to share it with them <laughs> but i didn't have the guts to share it you know so i was just waiting god you know when when do i share it and um, then I realized, hey, we were nearing Bangalore. We were going to land. And so I had to do it. It's now or never. So I turned to the husband and said, um, and asked him, hey, um, hey, do you play tennis? So he said, no. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, God, I'm wrong. So um, so then I asked him, like, um, so I just asked, OK, no. Um, uh, I told him, I, I thought I might as well tell him. So I said, you know. You know, when you walked in, um, I was I, I worshiped the Lord Jesus and I and I prayed, saying, "Lord, you show me something." So I saw this racket. So I just thought uh, I should ask you that. So he said, "Hey, uh, I, I guess I was wrong." Then he said, "Hey, no, you know, my wife, she's a badminton player, and uh, she's a." You know, she uh, she represented the state or district or something. He said, "She's a badminton player." I said, "Wow, that's great!" And then by the time this my wife was also curious, she leaned in and I said, uh, "Ma'am, hi. Uh, this is uh, my name is Jay Kumar." And um, so you know, I was just praying as he walked in. So this is what uh, God revealed. I said, "Wow, wonderful!" Then I turned to him and said, you "See, um, are you a speaker? Like, you know, do you do any public speaking?" So he said, "Yeah, that's what I do for a living." You know, I'm a motivational speaker. I do soft skills training, and this is what I do. And then I said, "Hey, you know, uh, I believe that the Lord Jesus knows you, and He has given you this skill. He has blessed you with this, and it's for a purpose that you be an influence in people's life. You know, it's like, uh, it's it's like it's so. And I did, then again, you know, I shared with him what I saw, the mic on fire, and uh, that you know He's going to be speaking." plans and purposes of God into people's life. Now, both of them were not believers. Um, you know, they, uh, they were from a, you know, a Hindu background. And so they were stunned, amazed. They said, wow, this is nothing like this has happened to us before. This is the first time anything like this has happened. Then I, you know, told them about, about the Lord Jesus, you know, uh, uh, um, then, you know, I, 
then i kind of very apologetically you know i was starting to say uh, i don't know you know uh, if you know about the lord jesus and i don't know if you might been to church then the wife was very very interested she said hey, you know i studied in a convent a uh, christian convent and uh, you know i i i really respect the lord jesus and i you know i've heard of his teachings and all that so then i got a little more courage and i shared the gospel you know this is what the lord jesus did this is what the what the cross means and and obviously god has a plan for you both you know he knows you both he has a plan for you both so um so you can speak to him you can this is what the cross is about so you, um so they were like thank you so much right thank you so much i we've never heard this before and uh, okay they didn't pray right there and receive christ but but i believe the a massive seed was sown that day in both their lives right? and it all started with a word of knowledge right and what is the word of knowledge it was about their occupation and what they were do or maybe uh, you know about their recreation their whatever, whatever they were involved in and it came in the form of two pictures right now if i had just dismissed it saying god racket when my can't fire okay nice pictures <laughs> you know Uh, then i would have missed that opportunity to share about jesus so you see that uh, you know it's um, it helped in sharing about christ in two people drawing near to christ you know taking that one step being open uh, to the gospel right so um so then that really you know uh, this was many years back so that really gave me uh, a lot of confidence and and really encouraged me i would say to to say okay uh, you know i'll just pursue if god shows me anything i need to act on it you know it could be to pray it not need not be always to share right it could be to pray about it uh, pray for that person about it but um, but also it could be to reach out and and have or initiate a conversation build a bridge um, to with that and through which uh people could be saved people could draw near to jesus right so so that's um you know something about word of knowledge uh, and all these spiritual gifts right very very powerful okay so it involves taking a risk it involves uh uh you know being foolish and i remember you know uh, there are there were times when things were uh, you know totally off and uh, like i was, I was uh, asking the lord lord i i want to know the name of this person right <laughs> and uh, so yeah god you know tell me what is the name of this person and i thought you know that was the name which i heard in my spirit and and it was it was off it was wrong but the thing is to you know test out so again it was uh, some other journey and then i asked the person hey is this your name and he was very very uh, he was kind of suspicious right he said uh, you know no it's not my name and anyway i just kind of tested that out so yeah so just wanted to share that okay so what we're going to do is kind of test it out right uh, let's stop this uh we have about 3 more minutes so why don't why don't we just pray and um uh you know when you look at your screen i think you will see uh, others also right uh, others also other names are there so let's pray and ask the lord believe the lord to give us a word okay for someone Um, just ask the lord lord give me a word for you know maybe one person who about this isaac or leah lama or john paul just give me a word lord and uh, yeah just going to share what god puts in our heart you can put it in the chat i think that's the best way uh, this is what i so again you know we're not evaluating right we are we are learning growing in it so whatever you know just like how we did in the last session we're going to pray and perceive in our spirit a god is a god who speaks and we're going to you know share that right okay let's take some time okay we're going to take 2 minutes to pray and uh, and then when the lord reveals something we would share it okay so maybe you can take some time to look at the screen and then pray and say god you know what is it and be sensitive in your spirit you know is the lord revealing something is the lord showing something oh 
Yeah, you might want to make a note of it, you know, what you're seeing, what um, you're hearing, um, so that you don't forget it. Okay, so um, yeah, I um, maybe just take two minutes to share. You know, uh, whatever you sensed, you saw. Maybe it was not for a a person, uh, but you could still share that. Maybe it will resonate with someone who's here. Um, so yeah, so just want to want to invite you to put it on the chat. Again, you know, it's this is a safe environment. If you're wrong, it's okay. You know, if I make a mistake, it's fine. Um, but let's go ahead and share. You know, what is it that you sensed in your spirit when you prayed? Um, would you like to share it on the on the chat, or maybe you know, unmute and speak? Um, you could do that now. Okay, who will go first? Okay, yeah, go ahead, Zelitali. Um, like, uh, in summer spring, I don't know why, how, mm. but uh, I saw a picture, mm. and in that picture, like, I saw someone handing over one dollar bill to Brother uh, Shubhashish. Uh, I'm yeah. sorry, sorry, uh, handing over? One dollar bill, American handing... one dollar bill. Okay, one dollar. Okay, to whom? Brother Subhashish. Sub Subhashish. Okay, Subhashish yeah. Singh. Okay, okay. I don't know. Uh, I don't okay, know let's... what it means. Yeah, but okay, so okay. Picture. Okay, okay. So that's from Zelitoli. Okay. Um. Okay, let's. Yeah, I think we have a few here. So a picture. Um, someone handing over one dollar to Subhashish. So Subhashish, I uh, just want to check with you. Um, like, uh, does that make sense in any way? Um, one dollar being handed over to you. Um, does it speak to you? Does it witness in your heart? Uh, can you tell us? Uh, actually, I don't yeah. know uh, how God has spoken, but these days uh, we are uh, especially concerned about beggars and the destitute, those who are having uh, uh, struggling uh, during pandemic. Um, so today also means uh, we have planned. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe um, God has spoken to her, especially every mm -hmm. week uh, we are going uh, to such few people though are uh, real in need for food mm -hmm. especially for beggars and maybe I think God has spoken to Zelitoli through this wow praise God yeah supernatural provision to continue the work right um, or yes. financial provision to continue the work that you're doing praise God yeah thank you Zelitoli for sharing that and thanks for confirming that Subhashish praise God wonderful Okay, John Paul says, praying for Georgia, I sense a word, be still and know that he is God. So Georgia, um, also the following verse, why are you cast down, why are you disquieted, hope in God, for I shall, I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God, Psalm 42, 11. Sense uh, like God reminds to quieten the spirit and rest in his presence. Okay, 
praise god georgia confirms that wonderful okay uh, this is something that while well, is praying um, uh, you know uh, this is for ribika ribika mahato i saw a cactus plant okay uh, and uh, and um, and and also that kind of turned into a grain of corn you know a cactus plant uh, turning into a grain of corn you know a cactus plant um grows in the most uh, like desert area uh, and where there is very less water so i i don't know if that um, you know that was about the way things were uh, um, but the cactus plant of course it grows um, and it's you know it's it it goes in the you know in a wilderness in a desert like thing but uh, i saw that and it had a lot of spikes and everything uh, thorns but i saw that like changing transforming into a like a grain of corn not a grain of corn it's like a you know that the whole corn itself a sheaf of corn um, yeah so i just sense that um, uh, you know there's a there's a change there's a shift um, that god is making you um, productive um thrive yeah um does that make sense ribika uh, no pressure you can say no <laughs> um but if it's something if it makes sense you can you know just talk about it or you know, type that in um okay okay you can um you you can type it in i, I can't hear you i don't know if you've uh, uh, unmuted your mic how much you can type it in as well okay so uh, others anything i found a plant budding it looked like a money plant i don't know who it is for okay right okay okay that's from priya found a budding plant looked like a money plant okay 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 so what what we'll do is uh, you know continue to put that in the chat right whatever we'll we'll continue our discussion once we come back uh, after the break so we'll come back at 10:05 right we'll take a 10 minute break we'll come back at 10:05 and we'll continue with our discussion okay thank you <laughs> 